A little look at the reaction to Sunday's Clásico, which was won by Real Madrid and included a goal from Ballon d'Or winner Karim Benzema. You can definitely spot the difference between the capital and the Catalan press. Marca far superior as Madrid in charge. Mundo Deportivo, painful sport, soulless. Les Bordieu, void, basically. All are still with us. Ale, let's start with you because we've asked you for your player ratings. Oh. Wow. In El Clasico, I'm sure this was a task that you pretty much enjoyed doing. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here they are. So, Rafinha three, Busquets three. Let's start with the, the lowest rated players, Ale. Well, the reason Rafinha gets a three is because he was merely out there and that was about it. Good service to Lewandowski. But other than that, he just didn't have an impact on the game. Didn't really get involved at all throughout the course of the time that he was on the field. Dembele gets higher than Rafinha because even though Dembele was ineffective, he only gets a four. It's not that much higher. Even though he was uh, not effective, I think that Dembele at least looked to participate. Rafinha did not. Busquets is a three because quite honestly, when you have Tony Cruz run by you, the manner in which he did for the uh, Vinicius, uh, eventually running behind and then the Benzema goal, I think that is damning evidence against Busquets. And it wasn't the only time that that happened. There were people running by Busquets through the midfield time and time again. He right now physically is getting exposed and then is unable to control the pace of the game with his possession. So therefore becomes a liability for them in the midfield. In terms of everybody else is fives and fours because that's about as much as Barcelona played yesterday in fives and fours, N nothing better than that. They got to a good attacking positions, but really couldn't take advantage of anything that they were able to create because by the time they got to the final third, everything had been too slow, too predictable, became easy to defend for Real Madrid. Uh, Jules, we were listening to the latest Gab and Jules podcast. You see there that Ali Moreno gave Xavi just a three. Should Ansu Fati be starting? Could that be part of the reason why the coach is getting such a low rating? I don't think that's the only reason, though. Although Gab really believed that Ansu Fati should be starting, I was more outraged, really, or in, more in disagreement with Xavi over, over Busquets. I agree with Ali. I would have given Busquets a two, not even a three. I just cannot comprehend how you can start a game like this against a midfield three of Chouameni, Cruz and Modric with Sergio Busquets in, in there. It, for me, already, you, you, you're... You, you start your team to, to fail and to lose. I don't, I don't get it. And then you don't even correct it, or not early enough correct it during the game. So I, I was very disappointed. And even Sergio Roberto, to a certain extent, uh, on that right-hand side against Vinicius, that was a battle that you, that lost, that you lost if just on the team sheet. So for me, Xavi missed a big trick. And I don't also get the obsession with the wingers. I mean... We talked a lot about it with Gab on, on our show this morning, but I think this Barca team has to create chances in a different way than just putting the ball to Rafinha and Dembele and hoping for the best from them because it, it just doesn't always work like that. How, though, Robbo, how can they make things change for Barcelona? How can they get that right? Well, as Jules just said, I think by just sticking with the wingers, I don't think Rafinha and Dembele can play with each other. They rely very much on whoever's playing on the right-hand side. And it could have happened against Real Madrid because they created two V1s against the fullback down that side with Rafinha and Sergio Roberto. But they just didn't take advantage of it. They turned away from great situations. They were right in front of us. And you thought, go on, go up pace, be incisive and make things happen. They didn't do so. So those two players, I thought, were very poor. Busquets, likewise, as Ali said, it was so obvious that he was he just couldn't control the pace of the game, both with his defending and on the ball. And when people ran past him, it was embarrassing at times. And that's why De Jong has to play there or Frank Kessie has to come in. I've seen Frank Kessie play for Milan. They've bought him for quite a while. They got him uh, from Milan. He's a top-class player. He will improve their team if he gets a chance to play in midfield in that role or if De Jong plays in that role. Xavi got it wrong before the game. He's going to have to make big changes now, not in terms of the whole personnel, but the way he attacks the game. He's had a, a, a fair time now to try and get his tactics right. He thought he was going the right way. I think the last three or four games, even the second half against Celta Vigo, will tell him he's not quite right at the moment. He needs to make changes. So they were the Barcelona player ratings. Ale's been busy. He also gave us Real Madrid's player ratings after El Clasico. And they look something like this. I see Valverde's got an eight there, Ale. Tony Cross said he's a top three player in the world right now.
Yeah, Valverde is just right now for Real Madrid perhaps their most consistent player. You know exactly what he's going to give you. A lot of work, covering a lot of ground, covering a lot of space. You know the same things that I just said about Busquets, unable to cover the ground. Well, Valverde does that and more. Down the right-hand side, he'll tuck inside, he'll help, he'll trade the play. So I think for Real Madrid and Carlo Ancelotti now having Fede Valverde, he is a problem solver for you. He's covering a lot of holes on the field. Kroos and Modric, while they were now standing over the course of the game, there were moments in which they controlled how the game was going to be played. And when they were, they were combining late in the first half and they're doing back heels and changing the point of attack and then having a little give and go and Chouameni just holding behind them, it seemed like they had everything under control for Real Madrid. Vinicius Jr., look, he gets a six and it's, it's the lowest mark simply because there were moments in which he was isolated against Sergio Roberto and you thinking, man, well, this is a mismatch. And it was for the Benzema goal. But a lot of the time, Vinny Jr. took too long in exploiting that advantage. And a lot of the time, he was cutting back, turning back and passing the ball over to whoever was coming from behind or whoever was trailing the play. Overall, Real Madrid, I don't think they were outstanding, but they were certainly better than Barcelona and far more consistent than Barcelona. And I think the most important thing, they know who they are. They trust who they are. There's a certainty about Real Madrid that just, there just isn't with Barcelona. They hope they're going to play well. Real Madrid know that they're going to win. That's a big difference between the two clubs right now. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.